this business use case is pretty much common across many of the data warehousing or etl projects where try where they try to implement process to load the real time data coming from api into data warehouse i request you to go through this video end to end and also try to practice side by side so in the previous chapter like we passed the isbn number to the process and we were able to fetch the book details and it was shown as a response in our postman but what if if we want to store the data into our oracle table on real time basis so we will learn the procedure and processes how we can obtain this result in this video so let's see through this example so i have created a process and in a similar manner i will pass this isbn value it will fetch the details and then store into the table so let's trigger this process from postman so currently we don't have any data so once the response is successful we can see the data has been updated into our table so it matches with the postman response to capture the real time data into oracle table we need to create a load table that is bookstore book details with following column names like book isbn book title book page and book website you can find the create query for this in the description section below so how the data flows so through postman we will pass the isbn value as a request to iscs ci process it will consume that request and pass it to api bookstore which is the third party api if the request is successful it will send the response which contains all the book details like website pages title isbn number etc and this response is getting consumed by ci process and it will again trigger the service connector which will store the data into bookstore details table that is our oracle table and also pass the response as book details all the details about books as an response to the postman so that is the confirmation like our request was successful for this tutorial as a prerequisite we will require oracle 21c version configured at your personal laptop in the description section i have provided few links where you can go through the video and try to configure it in your local machine apart from that i have also provided few commands where you can create a user and password and also grant privileges to it which are essential to connect with our iscs and oracle while configuring oracle jdbc drivers we will follow following steps at step 1 we will download the jdbc driver so go to the google try searching jdbc driver download when you try to search it so following websites will occur on this page go to this jdbc and ucp downloads page so once you go over here as we are using 21 version so ojdbc 8 jar file is compatible with it try to download it so in the download section once it is downloaded successfully this executable jar file will appear in your in your downloads folder so next step will be you need to copy this jar file and go to the following path so you have to go to the c driver go to the program files go to the informatica cloud secure agent go to the apps go to the process engine this service process engine supports all the application integration processes so you need to go to this ext i have already uh, copy pasted it so you can paste this so once this ojdbc 8 driver is present in this so we need to restart this informatica cloud secure agent then only the changes will be reflected within the secure agent so what you have to do now go to this search menu look for services click on the services so you can open this informatica cloud secure agent also where you can see the status current running status so currently the services are up and running but we need to restart it so what we will do 
we'll go to this service go to the informatica cloud secure agent so here you will see the stop the service click on this so it will start shutting down the informatica secure agent so here you can see it is shutting down we need to wait until completely it gets shut down now you can see the secure agent has been stopped now we need to again start it now click on the start service option it will try to start the service again here you can see the secure agent is starting up now the agent has just started so here you can see the current status so we need to wait until all the services are up and running now you can see all the services are up and running going forward this changes will be reflected into secure agent and we will be able to connect with the oracle through J jdbc drivers to create a dash connector log into your informatica services go to the application integration click on new go to the service connector so click on this drop down menu so for creating a service connector for rest api we use the first one service connector using forms but if you want to create a connection with database like uh, mysql oracle sql server you need to use this service data access service connector using forms click on this let's name the connector if you want you can go to the browser and change the folder to locate it if you enable this option use o data so like it will uh, enable o data protocols so jdbc driver fully qualified java class name of the jdbc driver so we have located at the particular location right just few minutes before so we need to give that exact class path name so with this it will point out to the jdbc driver where it is located in the secure agent folder here we need to give the jdbc connection url so it will be in following format so it will be jdbc oracle thin at the rate host port and service so our host will be local host port will be 1521 and service will be xc so if you want to understand more about connections right click on this icon go to the properties you will see the details like host name, port and SID that is XC. We just need to ensure we are giving in the right format as mentioned above. So this will be my the this will be my host name, port and service. Give your username password. That's the password. So if you want to limit to a particular schema, you can give the schema name. Here you can give the schema name if you want to limit only limited set of tables into this connector you can also give the tables that needs to be included suppose if you want to exclude any tables in this connector you can give the table names over here now save the changes now go to the actions tab we will create the insert query click on the plus symbol go to the actions name name it as sql underscore insert go to the input so here we will declare the input fields to which we will pass the parameterized values that will be inserted into our table through insert query so let's create four parameters now go to the sql binding click on this pencil icon that is at the rightmost of that Given. name it as will insert give the SQL query so in this query whatever the input values that I am passing that is ISBN pages title and website that will be inserted into this table so click on create pages ensure the values that you are passing in the SQL query and input fields are matching if you want to test it give any random data 
click on save now click on the test results so whenever you are connecting with any of the databases like oracle sql server so they are at secure agent side so ensure like you are testing with secure agent so click on test once it is successful you can see row has been inserted if you scroll down the updated rows will be one so whenever like when you run update command insert or delete command so number of rows that has been impacted will be shown over here total number of rows that has been impacted so here you can see the sql response as well as request so this is the request that we have sent insert into these are the column names and as well as the values that we have passed as an input parameter now let's check in our database so here you can see those values has been inserted successfully now let's try learning about select command now go to this actions tab again click on plus sign make it as sql select go to the input so here we will pass the input value isbn and here let's this is our book isbn value right we'll take this one and test with it go to the sql binding click on this make it as sql select Give the query, select query. So this is my select query. So I will fetch all the details about this particular record by passing book ISBN as a filter. Click on create. Make sure this in ISBN value that is input parameter field value is same as over here now go to the test results click on test now if you scroll down it was able to fetch all the details that is isbn number book title book pages and website if you want to capture this isbn title page and website as an output field values from the service connector we can do it like we need to go back to this output field click on this plus signs so we have four fields right so we'll name it as out oracle isbn so here we need to give the exact field name values coming from this xml response as book isbn against this so this will get value from the column name book uh, isbn so as we have selected this column property similarly we need to ensure for other fields also if you want xml response also that also you can get it so in, in this field we will try to capture entire response result set as an xml value now go to the test result and test it again now the test is successful you can see this values has been captured as a separate output fields that are coming from the table so why we declare output fields is basically if we want to process further in our application integration processes then we can create the output fields get the values and then we can process it we have also captured entire response in xml format so here you can see it. this is the xml the format for the result set now let's create a update query let's suppose i want to update number of pages for one of the book again go to the action tab click on plus give here as sql update go to the input section i need to pass the filter condition and as well as the value that needs to be updated page number value let's take this one i will take asbn value as asd and page number as 780 for example now go to the sql binding 
give the SQL query. So this is my update query. So I am passing this input parameter. So it is always like uh, within the curly brackets and represented by dollar for all the incoming in input fields. And this is my filter value where I will pass the ISBN book. Click on create. Click on test result. Click on test. Here you can see no results has been fetched. Reason is like probably the input field name is not correct with that of SQL binding. So if you see, we have passed it as in page, but here in the inputs, we, it is in pages. So make it as page. Make sure like the input field name and in the SQL binding, both are in sync. Now try to test. Here you see, now the update rows is one, the response is successful. Now let's try to see our database. I will refresh it. Now here it is. So the book pages has been updated to 788. So the update operation is successful. Now let's try to delete all these records in this table. So we'll go back again, create a new action, name it as SQL delete. Go to the input tab. So I won't give any input because I want to delete all the records. Go to the SQL binding. Give the delete query. Create. Go to the test results and test it. So here you can see updated rows as, rows as two. So that means two records has been deleted. So go to the database, refresh it. Here you can see all the records has been deleted. Anyway, we were having only two records and those two records has been deleted. So that means all the four operations are working successfully in our dash connector. Now save it and publish it. To invoke this dash connector in process, we need an app connector. So let's create an app connector on top of this. Click on this plus sign. Go to this app connection. Click on this app connection. Click on create. Click on cancel. Click on the type. Click on the dash connector that you have created. Dash service connector. Run it on your secure agent. You can enable this O data option. Allowed users for O data. If you want, you can give your ICS username. Now again, you have to give the same properties that we gave in our service connector. Save the connection. Test the connection. So whenever the connection test is passed, that means this connection is successfully getting connected to our service connector and through that to our Oracle database. Now publish it. In the next video, we will write a process to get the data from API and store into the table on real time basis. Stay tuned. Please like my channel and subscribe it for upcoming videos.